encourage your soul, enlighten your mind, and empower your faith. This is The Light Network. Hello and welcome to Wifey Wednesdays, a podcast for women who are seeking to be the best wives they can be. I'm your host, Emily Hatfield, and this is the show where the plan is always to do things God's way, especially our Last time, we left off with the children of Israel being nearly destroyed because of their faithlessness and the action with the golden calf idol. What a downer, right? (laughs) Uh, But this week, we're sort of in a continuation of Moses' intercession for the children of Israel because we're picking up in Exodus 33. Here's what God says to Moses. Depart. Go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your offspring I will give it. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites and Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you, lest I consume you on the way. For you are a stiff-necked people. Do you see what's happening here? See, when God refers to the children of Israel as stiff-necked, he is saying that they are a people who refuse to bow down. They will not submit themselves. They will not humble themselves before God, but instead they keep resisting. It reminds me of my dog, who, when I take him to the vet, um, is a train wreck. Let's be real. He's terrible. He stiffens up. He pulls against the collar and the leash. He does this so much that one time, He even busted a blood vessel in his eye. Why? Well, because he wouldn't submit to the direction that I was leading. And he kept pulling and stiffening his neck so much, refusing to be dragged. Dragged. Dragged in that direction. And he ended up hurting himself. Well, this is what the children of Israel are like. They are constantly rejecting the leadership of God. They don't want to go his way. They're stiff-necked. And so God tells Moses, I am going to make good on the promise that I made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am going to give the people the land, but I'm not going with them. This hurts my heart. And to their credit, the children of Israel also responded with mourning. So, Moses intercedes for the people again. (laughs) Moses had been meeting God in a way that the Bible calls face to face. He was regularly, intimately communing with God. And so Moses asks God, will you show me your glory? So the Lord instructs Moses to cut himself two tablets of stone, because remember, he destroyed the Lord's copy. (laughs) Okay. And so then God tells him to ready himself for Mount Sinai. And then Exodus 34 says, The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Upon hearing this, Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And Moses said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and sin, and take us for your inheritance. Now, this is a beautiful picture. God, Moses' friend, shows a portion of himself to Moses. And what God chooses to reveal about himself in this moment, in this moment, after betrayal and abandonment from the people, in this moment, this is what God chooses to reveal about himself. I am steadfast in love and faithfulness. I am forgiving. And so Moses says, because you are. 
Lord, please pardon us. Please let us be your inheritance. Now, this is interesting phrasing because this is hearkening back to what God said in Exodus 19 when he told Moses, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So what does God do? He renews the covenant with this stiff-necked people. He had promised if they would obey, they would be his treasured possession. And so Moses says, if you are who you say you are, God, you are steadfast in love and faithfulness and pardon and grace, then please forgive us. And God does. He renews the covenant with this stiff-necked people, this people who are constantly turning their backs on him. And it's not just that they had turned their backs on him, right? Because these people, God knows, because God knows everything from all time, from everlasting to everlasting, nothing surprises God. God knows the end from the beginning. God knows they will turn away time and time and time again. But this is what he reveals of himself. He wants to forgive. He wants to remove iniquity. He is steadfast in his love and in his faithfulness. What a beautiful picture of our Father and what an undeserving people we are, just like those Israelites. So let's turn this toward an application for us. Okay, when I think about this this phrase that God used about being a treasured possession and being a kingdom of priests and a holy nation— This sentiment is echoed in the New Testament. Peter's going to relay that. You are a chosen chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. This is us to God now. We as Christians, we are this treasured possession. God wants this covenant. God is quick to forgive. He wants to. He wants to forgive us. He wants to be in a covenant with us. He wants to pardon us. So think about your end of the covenant. How often are we like the children of Israel? Or what about this? Would you still be willing to go if God wouldn't go with you? Would we be able to justify saying, oh, well, he's going to send an angel. Okay, well, we'll just go. He won't go, but he'll send an angel. That'll be fine. Oh, well, Moses is still going. Would we be content with someone coming between us and God? Would we be content to go with a representative of God when we could go with God himself? As crazy as that seems, I think sometimes maybe we are. We're content to have someone between us and God. Maybe we let our spouse's relationship with God dictate ours. Well, if they're unfaithful, we are too. Or maybe we're only as faithful as they are. If they're slacking off, we are. Or what about religious leaders? I have known too many people in leadership positions who act a lot like Aaron when it comes to their role in leadership, and they've made terrible, ungodly decisions. And a lot of people will say, well, if that person in leadership would do that, I don't want anything to do with that religion. But to that, I would say, are you willing to let someone come between you and your relationship with God. My whole life, it feels like I have been around people who did not do things the way that God wanted them to, even though they professed that they were the ones being God's instruments. And I get that it is discouraging when you see people who proclaim one thing act another way. Hypocrisy is disgusting. It's hard to overcome. And yet, instead of letting that drive me farther away from God, what I've always tried to do is let that draw me closer to Him, exposing the weakness within me that sometimes wants to put other people on pedestals instead of simply giving my whole allegiance to Christ. See, sometimes I do 
put people on a pedestal. Sometimes I do say, well, you're in leadership or you're a preacher or, or you're this or you're that. And if you sin, well, then my whole faith is going to crumble. But that's putting somebody in between me and God. That's putting a an imperfect person between me and God. And God says, I want to forgive. I want to be faithful to you and I will be. And through Jesus, as we talked about last time, our intercessor, we can have that relationship with God. Hebrews talks about Jesus being a high priest for us. and We get to go to God and have that relationship with him. Don't let somebody else come in between that. Every single person on this earth is imperfect. I know myself and I know that I am imperfect. And if someone were to look at me and say, well, she professes Christ and she still sins. Well, then I don't really want a relationship with God. How sad. I'm not a perfect representative of God. Don't look to me in the ways where I shine through. Instead, only look to me in the places where Jesus shines through. And when Jesus isn't shining through, come to me and help me to humble myself so that I will be more like Jesus. We have been given the privilege of having a close relationship with God. Don't let someone else come between that, not even your spouse. You have the relationship with God. You have the proper view of God. You have that proper adoration and faithfulness to him. I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to go somewhere where God will not be with me. I'm thankful that our intercessor, Jesus, has made it possible for us to enter into the holy places, to be able to have a relationship with our Father that isn't dependent upon someone else. We don't have to have a go-between. Our high priest is God himself, Emmanuel. We get to commune with the Father, the Son, and the Spirit on our own behalf. And the reason is because God's words are true. He is faithful and steadfast and willing and able to pardon our iniquities. Jesus made it possible for our sins to be washed away with his precious blood. I'm so thankful for the ways that God has shown himself to us through his word. I'm thankful for the heart of Moses that gives us a glimpse into what an intercessor is like. And I'm most thankful for our own intercessor who was willing to leave heaven and come to earth in order that we might never have to go somewhere without God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Truly, we are never alone. Thanks for listening. Next time, we're going to be talking about laws and the tabernacle, which I know you're going to be very excited to hear about, but um, I think it will be beneficial as we're walking through our Old Testaments and seeing all of the ways God has shown himself to us, that he is faithful to us, that he is steadfast, and merciful, pardoning our iniquities, and he's always, always, always wanted a relationship with us. I think all the way back to our beginning episode of this season, thinking about the garden and the sin that separated us, and from that moment forward, God has been longing for us to be back in that rightful relationship again. I'm so thankful for him. I'm so thankful that God himself came to earth to win my heart back. I know that like the Israelites, I don't deserve it. But I'm so thankful that God is so good, so loving, so perfect. I'm so thankful he's shown himself to us. And I'm, I'm so thankful that this is how he chose to show himself to us. It's amazing to me that in the midst of, of all of the things that were happening, God says, I want to be with you. We're undeserving, but this is so exciting. Thank you so much for being with me. Next time, like I said, we're going to walk through the tabernacle. Not literally, but you get what I'm saying. Laws, tabernacle. We're going to look at all of that, see what we can learn about our amazing God and our relationship with him. All right. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, remember, love God, love your husband.